what to oh, 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 oh. this is what this car feels like it was designed for to me Welcome back to the channel. Today we have gloomy weather as always. It seems like 50% of my videos are gloomy, 50% are sunny. Anyway, we're not talking about the weather today and we're definitely not talking about the Urus Performante. What we are talking about is this BMW XM, which um, is not the latest car in the collection, but it might well be eventually because um, I'm going to do a little video on it and see how it goes. As you can see, the BMW i7 isn't here at the moment. The reason for that is that it had an issue with the restraint system. So BMW has kindly lent me their XM demo. So I'm gonna take it for a drive and take you around it and let you know my thoughts on the very controversial, very debated and extremely hated BMW XM. So as you can see, the BMW XM is massive and that's in every aspect from the 22 inch rims to the height of the car, which towers almost above me. Um, the length of the car is huge, although the design does make it seem a bit smaller when you see in images. The largest aspect of this car would be the weight. So um, the car actually weighs 2.77 tons. Um, I mean, it's not light, but I'll get to that in a second. But for now, let me take you around the car. Like I said before, 22 inch optional M wheels. Over here, you have the charging port because this is a hybrid. You have this BMW XM badge that follows this plastic piece of trim along the side of the car and up. We come around to the rear, you have these wonderful lights. They have this like 3D effect, so they actually protrude out of the body of the car. Four exhaust pipes, um, which are all real and they are all very holy. Not holy as in Jesus Christ, but holy as in Jesus Christ. Um, we come over to the back, no BMW badge down here because this car is BMW's first dedicated M car in a very long while since the original BMW M. That means that this car has a lot to live up to, especially as an M car. I'm not quite sure it does as an M car, but as a general car, maybe. Um, over here, we have the BMW badge, which has been like laser etched onto the glass. I'm not sure why they did that. Um, it's also on the other side as well which again, I'm not quite sure why they did that. This wiper is something about the rear that I'm not a fan of. I don't think it's necessary. I think a spoiler with a drop down wiper would have been a bit more tasteful and a bit more clean on this rear design. All in all, the rear is okay. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm a massive fan of it, but I do not hate it. If you come back around to the side, you can see the door handles have this prism effect on that follows inside the car, which I'll show you in a second. So it gives you this nice little 3D-ish crystal diamondy diamante anyway <laughs> the car has a lot of um plastic trim going around the edges which seems to be the design trend now it's a very adventurous very different design it has been quite divisive i mean maybe not divisive people just don't like it but yeah um this is the front the grill is huge and the leds around the grill light up if i am um, find the key in my pocket and i punch this you'll see you get a nice little lighting effect which again i do not hate it's quite controversial in its design. A lot of people have said they dislike it or downright hate it, but um, I am gonna start some issues when I say, I don't mind how it looks. It's quirky, it's different, it's unique. And um, I, I'm not mad at that. A lot of cars now also are doing this split head type design, which I saw a lot of people complaining about. But the reason for that is that up here you have the LED daytime running lights and down here you have the main beam. I believe from my research, the reason for that is a lot of people were complaining in the United States about being dazzled by headlights and regulation had to change to allow automatic matrix beam headlights to work there and they had to drop them down to a certain height. And that's the reason now we're getting a lot of this split headlight design. I'm not a fan. But hey, what can you do, I guess? With 653 horsepower, 200 of which is provided by the electric motor and the 29.7 kilowatt hour battery, the car accelerates from zero to 60 in what BMW states is 4.1 seconds. I mean, personally, I think it will go much faster than that. However, we'll take it out on the road and we'll give it a test to see how it performs. Um, it drives well, the pull away is well. It feels good. Uh, it feels like that's enough power for this car, but there is an XM label red with even more power that is available. However, if I was going to get one, I think this would be the ideal version to get. So you're not spending too much, even though you are spending a lot and you are getting a, a pretty, pretty decent amount of performance, if you ask. I mean, some people would compare it to 
something like the Urus Performante, which has 666 horsepower and weighs 2,200 kilograms. This weighs 2,770 kilograms. So obviously that's considerably faster, but it's also considerably more expensive. Um, we pay 275,000 pounds for our Urus Performante. There are other cars, RSQ8, there's a Porsche Cayenne. You can get a used Bentley Bentayga. However, if you are a BMW aficionado or you just want something different, something that's based on itself and is in a shared platform with several other cars in terms of the Cayenne, the Q8, the Urus, the Bentayga, the Volkswagen. Anyway, you get my drift. This is its own, own car. This is a very thin panel. <laughs> If you want something that's unique, this is probably what you want to go for. So the exterior is very unique, very controversial. Let's take a look at the interior and see if it copies the same parameters. So open it up. Um, it's very BMW in here. As you can see, you've got this wonderful ambient lighting on the ceiling that shows the M colors as this is a dedicated M car. Also, speaking of the roof, you have this prismatic design, which is like a 3D prism effect. I did not make up the word prismatic. BMW did and they use it to describe this. This design actually replaces any option for a uh, panoramic roof so unfortunately you will always have this if you have a BMW XM. It looks okay, it looks good, however I personally would just prefer a panoramic roof although this must look sensational at night so if I get it out at night time I'll try and give you a preview of that. Um, if we come round to the main part of the interior as you can see it's very BMW so you have expensive levers good stitching, carbon fiber, very, very familiar looking. However, does it justify the price tag that they're charging for this car, which I'll get to in a second? I'm not sure. There's a lot of space in here. It does feel luxurious, but to me, it doesn't feel luxurious enough, especially when you compare it to something like the Urus that's parked over there, which this car is supposedly supposed to be a competitor with. Anyway, there's a lot of storage space. You can fit large bottles in the door bins, which is nice. There's enough space for four or five six foot adults the one in the middle of the back will struggle as you can see my son's car seat is there at the moment um it's a great interior it feels comfortable the materials feel plush however i just feel it doesn't look as sophisticated as luxurious as i would have expected it to be especially when the bmw i7 and the bmw 7 series exists with that very futuristic and luxurious design i feel like maybe they should have brought that over here and especially if we're not getting a um, panoramic roof at least give us a drop down tv screen at the back like in the bmw 7 series but i'm just nitpicking it's an essentially a great interior it's very x7 in here it feels like an x7 in here however you are given m specific components for example this m specific steering wheel with its m1 and m2 buttons that allow you to shortcut your favorite driving mode and favorite car setup at the push of a button you also have all these m logos pretty much everywhere in the car and the red start button um this section of the car feels very traditional bmw whereas you get up here and then it feels a bit more futuristic however this infotainment system is something that they're bringing across to all models so i had it actually in the bmw m3 touring that i had it's a great infotainment system it works well however because this car has a lot of features and then it's also a hybrid it means that you have to delve into there to do a lot of things for example if i want to just change my air conditioning i press climate menu and i'm greeted with this extra long um, section of um, the infotainment screen that just has several buttons that look the same and are very confusing so you have cooled seats heated seats um, you can change the balancing and things it's just a bit too complicated also if i go to the home page of the car this is a, it, again it's just doing way too much and one thing i've also noticed by playing around with this there is no dedicated drive mode um, settings menu or anything like that Instead, you kind of have to use the M1 and M2 or the setup button to um, pick your drive mode. But it just doesn't, it's not snappy enough. Sometimes I just want to press sport mode. And I don't want to mess around with M1 and M2 because I've configured them specifically. But again, I am just nitpicking. Um, the carbon fiber is nice. It feels good in here. There's a lot of ambient lighting. It feels special. It feels unique. However, I'm not sure it justifies the price tag. This car, as spec that I'm sitting in now, is 164 or 166,000 pounds which is a lot for that price you could pretty much get a g-wagon you could get a used urus i'm not sure if it's too expensive especially when the interior just feels like regular bmw it just does not feel special enough 
Um, one thing that's really nice though that I actually have never had in a car before, you actually have cooled and heated cup holders, which I don't even have in the i7. You have a lot of luggage space in there. But given the condition of the car, it is a demo car, so they do give this to customers quite often. So it wouldn't have been taken care of as much as it should have. But uh, yeah, I like it. Let's uh, jump in the back and let's see how that is. So in the rear, I've got my front driver's seat all the way back. I have tons of space. So um, I'm six foot. I've got a lot of headroom. The seat is very, very comfortable back here. You also have your own climate control settings down here. USB-C there and USB-C in front of you. You can also attach a screen here if you want, which is nice. It feels good back here. It feels a little bit cramped though, because again, it's ultra dark in here. I don't think the dark leather is helping, but it feels really good. I could uh, do a journey sitting in the back of this car and it just gives me that again, X7 vibes. I keep going back to that because it feels almost like this car should be an X7 or X8M, but that might have been harder to market. Anyway, let's go around to the trunk space and I'll show you one of my favorite sections of this car. As you can see, the trunk space is massive. Um, there's a lot of noise. So um, let's jump inside the car and get it out of here so we can talk to you about it properly. Or so I can talk to you about it properly because we can't talk because this is YouTube. And, well, you can leave comments, but anyway. <laughs> Uh, one thing that I haven't discussed with you yet is the fact that this car is a hybrid so when you start it up it starts up in full electric mode so you can get a silent pull away. Um, the hybrid battery I charged it and it gave me on a full charge 50 miles which um, I'm pretty surprised about. I thought it was going to be more like 30. I'm not sure if it actually will do 50 miles but we'll have to wait and see but I'll pull away now and you can see you have enough hybrid grunts to get you moving easily you don't have to put your foot down um, i'm going to try and find some roads that allow this car to um, be tested i should say so i'm pleasantly surprised about how maneuverable this car is it just doesn't have any issue taking corners no real understeer that i can sense no body roll it just feels really nice really really nice for such a large car it's so easy to drive and so responsive. I'm very impressed by it. Uh, quick one, let's just see what the revs sound like. There's, there's a soft limiter making it a bit softer than it would be, but it sounds good, it sounds nice. So um, I've just brought it to a rough bit of road, the most off-roading an XM will probably ever see. And um, it, it's doing fine, it doesn't feel uncomfortable. The Urus Performante on this surface would be a nightmare. This feels great. Um, I have no issues. A lot of people have said it's quite uncomfortable, but again, I think they're trying to see it as something that it's not. A G-Wagon can do this, but it's no more comfortable than what we're experiencing now. Uh, well, the previous gen, the new gen G-Wagon, I haven't driven yet, but this feels fine to me. I like this. I actually have no issues with the way it rides, the way it performs, and the way it drives, which is strange because a lot of journalists have been talking about how it's not fast enough, it's too heavy, or um, is uncomfortable. To me, it feels absolutely fine. One thing I did notice is the car didn't seem to sound great on launch. A lot of the sound you hear in this car seems to be artificial, so I'm just gonna go under like a little tunnel area and just see if it actually does make noise. kind of whack. Launch control! Ah! <laughs> it doesn't sound great, uh, but I guess we're a victim to regulation now. Sound restrictions and emissions are causing cars to just be quieter and quieter. It's a shame because I feel like this could have a really aggressive sound. So maybe an exhaust on one would be pretty impressive. So currently going to get a car seat for my son, but I just wanted you guys to check out the sheer scale of the BMW XM. So this is the XM and that's a normal sized car. Um, as you can tell, it's dwarfed. So with this normal size car, I'm pretty tall. Next to the XM, I'm pretty sure it's taller than me or just about the same height, which is a bit ridiculous. Also, when it comes to a parking space in the UK, they're not that wide and this barely fits. So yeah, if you're interested in getting one, you're gonna have to consider, you probably won't be able to take it many places easily. So they didn't have the car seat I wanted. Basically, because we're getting the Aventador, it's not ISOFIX. It's a certain kind of car seat, but it has to meet our 129 regulations. 
they didn't have a rear wheel facing in there. So the search continues, it might just be an Amazon thing, but. So the BMW XM has a wonderful amount of storage space. It has a, a great storage capacity, in fact. Um, the only thing is it hasn't got a split tailgate and the car is pretty large. So when you park near something, you get those moments, I was getting ready to stop it, where uh, you're worried that it will just hit it. But as you can see, I can load up tons of stuff in there. Right now I've just got my water and this wonderful XM badge that normally carries the charger. Um, the floor on this car doesn't raise up so you can't keep your uh, charging cables underneath there. Instead you have to keep it in this bag that hooks to the car. And then also one thing that's weird about this car that I've noticed that there's no load lip. So that means that if you're loading let's say a basketball on a slight incline it will just roll out or anything that is slippy or rolly. So um, yeah that's pretty uh, pretty different but it's easy to get stuff in which is nice. So currently driving the XM we're in um, hybrid or should I say electric mode at the moment so we're just cruising along. It's very urgent to go on uh, electric mode and that's thankfully because the type of motors and the size of the battery in this car meaning that you can just pull away in electric mode comfortably and not feel like the car's struggling. In the hybrids I've had in the past, for example my Panamera hybrid, it always felt like it was severely underpowered whereas this just feels like an EV. I'm not feeling any need for um, having to push the throttle down harder and I can stay in EV mode. But what I'll do now is I'll start up the engine. So to start up the engine in this car there's a few different ways you can slam on the throttle M1 or M2 mode. Um, I believe also if I press M hybrid and I select E control mode it will start the engine as it does to ensure that my battery stays at this level constantly which is nice. So as the um, engine warms up we're still going to be driving around on electric mode because we're not going to request that much power from the car. So now we're using the engine even though it's slightly cold it moves very nicely. This car does not feel like 2.7 tons. At any point have I driven it and I thought oh this feels a bit heavy. It feels very smooth and it feels very agile, eager to turn. But what I'm going to do now is um, drive further and see if I can get on some nice roads to not push it to the limits, but just see what it can really do. So I'm going to put my foot down. I want you to see how much power that this, uh, this powertrain can deliver. So put in this most aggressive settings. Four, two, oh, 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 oh. Some nice gear shifts. Um, the uh, eight-speed torque converter gearbox um, really feels punchy in this setup. This is what this car feels like it was designed for to me. Just cruising on the motorway in comfort. You can have five people in it. They all have enough space, enough legroom, and they can all chill out. You're isolated from the sounds outside. It's stable enough to go at high speed, and then you still get that. Uh, SUV style ride when you're going for it. I, I, I like it. I mean, this car's got a lot of hate and I think it's fine for a 2.7 ton car as well. It feels fast. People say that this car competes with the Urus, which it kind of does in a sense, but it gives me more like, I don't know, just sporty FU vibes, almost like a Cadillac in a way, but just sportier. So it just feels like a car that's like, I just wanted something different. I'm sick of seeing all these G-Wagons, all these Uruses, all these other cars on the road. I wanted something different that stands out, performs, and is still comfortable. And I think this is where this car sits. So that's the BMW XM. Uh, I have thoughts. I have my opinion. I actually really like this car. And I like it so much that I am going to consider getting one. It's just so unique and it's very comfortable. It performs well. I wish our Urus Performante was as comfortable as this, but this, I don't know, something about it. It's just quirky, it's different. I would get it in a different spec and I'll get a lighter interior and I like the gold wheels, but we'll see. Maybe I'll get one, maybe I wouldn't. Uh, Ashraf behind the camera, what do you think? Don't get one. He's saying don't get one. But, but BMW, we love it. Yeah. <laughs> As you guys know, I love BMWs now after experiencing a lot of the brand. And I actually prefer this to the BMW M8 that I had. And if you're wondering why I said had, you can tell the M8 isn't here anymore. The reason for that is, although it's a great car, if you have multiple cars, I just didn't find the M8 as something that appealed to me. It was a slightly bit too firm. I wanted a more comfortable car, something with the comfort, performance, and something that was a bit unique, a bit rare from BMW and I think that is a BMW XM. It is a lot of money but with the hybrid element I believe you can run it through a business and get some discount but I'm going to do a bit more research and I know BMW are doing a lot of deals on this car at the moment. I really like it. 
Uh, my only qualms so far with this car are the design on the side is quite divisive and on the rear. I'm not too mad at the front, I just wish it was slightly different. Also the lack of panoramic roof, I would struggle with that. Um, the ride comfort is great but I understand when people say it's a slight bit too firm, I wish you could take it one step more comfortable, one step softer. I wish you could also lower the car with active air ride which would be nice, just sometimes I just want a lower car, you know what I mean? Um, also. Um, this is my biggest pet peeve. I'm not sure if this is inaccurate, so if I'm wrong, please let me know. But only let me know if you are 100% certain or you work for BMW. Basically, you can charge this car. The charging port is awkwardly positioned here, so um, that's a hassle in itself. But also, the car can't seem to recuperate energy from the engine and stick it into the battery itself. So that means you kind of always have to plug the car in if you want to experience that 600 and 53 horsepower, um, it can't recoup the battery itself. It can hold battery, but then you're not getting efficiency. And that's something I liked about the Porsches, my hybrid uh, Panamera, for example, it can charge itself back up. Hell, even my SF90 can charge itself back up if I need that performance, or if I wanna, you know, I'm driving into a city and I wanna be quiet, or it's an area that I'm leaving late tonight and I wanna be quiet. I just wish, I wish, I wish, I wish that you could self-charge this car. So if I'm wrong, please let me know. But all in all, I really like it. And this is probably one of the first reviews that you'll probably see where someone says they like it. But hey, what do I know? I'm not a journalist. I'm just a regular dude that buys cars and enjoys cars. And I definitely enjoyed this. So I think I'm definitely might maybe buy one. But